The Barbarian has always been seen as the hardest class, but it's also the most rewarding. Through patience and determination, rewards are reaped. Lots of patience though, like lots of patience. But the hardest road always leads to the best results. And this is how my run as a hardcore throwing barbarian went down. I start off by impaling Rakanishi or Bunch for some levels, then made my way towards the counters for a stealth. This build doesn't need any other runes cause you can't suck at throwing items anyway. With the rune worth complete I make my way towards Andariol who went down swiftly. I follow it up by casually 360 no scoping the summoner before giving in to my throwing pot addiction. Cause you see, this barbarian is a troubled man that exists by drinking and gambling. The Duriel fight is only possible through the hard work, grit, determination and sacrifice of my mercenary, which is a price I am willing to pay. I clear out the jungle and make my way to the lower Kurast, where I put the game on player's aid to get gambling funds and gear. My mercenary risks his life against the demons of Travancore so I can soar and claim all the glory of taking one explosion. To be fair, it did hurt. Getting resist is hard on this build. Against Mephisto I decided to just get good and casually dodged every single attack he threw at me. Which proves that hardcore is easy, just dedicate your entire life to the game and you too will be able to do this. After walking through the jungle on bare feet, I decide to do some gambling and end up winning a bet from some guy named Sander and take his boots. In the chaos sanctuary I once again am prepared to sacrifice my mercenary life to buy time and distance so I can kill the infector of souls. However, in the Diablo fight the mercenary is powerless, the mighty demon for some reason deals a massive amount of damage to him. So I have to fight him myself, a risk that I'm not as willing to take, so I start running around in panic, just dodging everything he throws at me, only risking to throw back when it feels safe. Lightning flies around the arena, circles of fire fly everywhere, I narrowly avoid the lightning time after time. And all I could do was keep throwing javelins. The barbarian's drinking problem coming into play as I keep missing the giant demon. But with each hit, the demon's HP goes down lower and lower. During the fight, Diablo ends up behind the torches in his home. They fully block his attacks, giving me some leeway in the fight. However, he quickly moves away from them and continues his barrage. After what feels like an eternity, the demon goes down and I reap the rewards of combat. An amazing armor with life, stats, resist and damage reduce. Having cleared the chaos sanctuary, I make my way towards act 5. Where things apparently have gone fully to shit. Man, all I did was get some milk and now we are getting siege. No wonder I left. I decide to help out the entire nation on my own by doing what no one else could. Seriously, what the hell guys? Only getting into trouble against Lister the Tormentor and his minions, having to rely on my mercenaries expertise once again to clear them out. The fight against the final of the three involved a lot of throwing stuff because Bale is very tanky. But by taking the risks Jamali is willing to make, I end up taking the demon down. His loot upgrades my gear by giving me some excellent war javelins. And I make my way towards Nightmare. Where an undead drops me demon hide gloves. He obviously stole them, so I can just take them. That's how that works, right? The gloves have everything I could want for the Andario fight, so I make my way towards her. And feeling generous, I decide to give Jamali every single drink I can get him. He still immediately dies. Thanks, bro. After clearing the catacombs, I check my phone and see that it's a Durant's terror zone, which means it's time for the loot pinata. Mephisto drops me a serpent skin armor, which is a viper magi, an amazing addition to my resist. He also drops me Sigan's gloves and a Cathan's mask, both of which I decide to use for the set bonuses. But why am I even doing a throwing barbarian run? Well, they buffed it in the remake. The most important part of it is that the mastery now gets a chance to pierce and not consume a quantity every time you make a critical hit. The amazing drops continue on and I find a shaft stop, one of the best solo self found armors in the game. With its 30% damage reduction, it's fantastic. And after all of this good luck, I decide to celebrate, cause everyone is always one gamble away from winning the jackpot, I casually spew all of my gold towards Alcor. 
Having practiced on normal, killing Mephisto in Nightmare isn't much of a problem, so I make my way towards Act 4. Lord decides, decides to be mean and ignores the 15 minute no rush rules and spawns straight on top of me and my mercenary, cornering Hazard, but his holy freeze hour proves itself, surviving the size's onslaught. The Diablo fight in Nightmare is a bit different than it is in normal. Where the normal fight is one of the hardest fights in the game, the Nightmare and the Hell fights are basically free. All you need to do is get so close that you can give his ball sack a good whiff and his lightning can't hit you anymore. Do move out of the fire though, that still hurts. Act 5 Nightmare makes it possible to buy Hurl Pads, so I shop around until I get one to craft with, upgrading my weapons once again. Eldritch blesses me with the Saigon's helmet, completing the Gauntlet Boots Helm combo. I also get Cannot Be Frozen in the form of a dead sash. The rest of Act 5 is no threat, so it's time to start the hardest part of any run, the preparation for hell. I save Anya before making my way into the terror zones. Your chance to hit is based on your level, so I need them. Despite my mercenary doing well, it is time to hire another. Getting the Act 3 mercenary gives me access to a second form of damage, something I will drastically need in hell. And with preparation done, it is time to get into it. Only to find out that my damage is the reason I started drinking thawing pots in the first place. I decide to make my way into the TC85 areas like the crypt and the pits because I want to find an elite base to craft and I end up finding a flying axe and using it for my craft. A small upgrade but it will do for now. The catacombs almost proved to be aptly named as I need to do my first save and quit of the run due to some afflicted. Antariel also uses my health bar as a scoring system to see how hard she can hit but between battle cry and a fast health pool I survive her onslaught. And I end up being rewarded by a unique ring which turns out to be the very underrated dwarf star. Act 2 however is where my adventures shriek to a halt. I come across a bone warrior supported by some unravelers and I just do not have the damage to kill him. Commiserating my misery I turn to gambling again, gambling an amazing hurl bat. All I need to do now is to upgrade it to a wing dex. Should be easy right? All I need is an Umrune. How hard can it be? The best way to get one is to farm the countess. She rewards it by dropping me laying of hands gloves that I am always happy to wear. I keep farming and on my way past some archers I end up finding a sir rune which doesn't add to the story but I thought it was cool. Unfortunately while extremely rare they are completely useless. A go rune opens up a lot more options and I decide to make a hustle, figuring that if I deal a bit of damage but deal it faster I still do more damage. This does mean I have to be a bit more careful though. Overshooting just a bit, I find a mall rune before finding a pole and a rare flying air. It's all incremental damage increases but those are the name of the game here so I'm all for it. After 9 hours of counters runs I finally end up finding the second pole rune and get to make an arm rune and my wing dex, granting me the axe effect. However at this point my resistances are very low so I decide to make a heart to replenish some cold resist. And after all that farming I have a ton of gold so I decide to go gambling again and like always I heard you should never quit because you can always win big next time. And I end up doing just that and gamble a Mara's Kaleidoscope. With my newfound gear I head into the maggot lair easily clearing out the physical immune and in the Claw Viper Temple I get my chance for revenge as the axe effect lures in hordes of bone warriors supported by guardians. The grit, determination and sacrifices all turn out worthwhile as I take all of them down one by one in a battle of sheer determination. And because I realize everyone wants to know what that set amulet over there is, it's a Vitalis. The arcane sanctuary cannot stop me either and I head into the Duriel fight. And here the bad AI of the mercenary actually ends up working out fantastic. He keeps wanting to reposition to get a safe shot, ending up with him walking around the arena casually with Duriel following him around. Allowing for me to just keep throwing my axes at him. Act 3 however introduces me to my worst recurring nightmare. Sazak the burning turns out to be cursed and extra strong but even worse he is fire and physical immune. And this is a creature I cannot deal any reasonable damage to. So I decide to run around and make my way to the eye behind his back. Boy I sure do hope I don't encounter any more of those physical fire immunes. I keep on making my way throughout the jungle and end up dropping a unique Francesca. I immediately equip the scalper despite crying about how low the damage on it actually is. Wishing I could wipe away my tears, I enter the Flayer dungeon where the game just smiles at me before throwing a boss pack of dolls at me. We luckily get stuck behind a Flayer that's just chilling in the door opening so I can just mow them down. 
the witch doctor drops me an ist. I don't know what's up with all these runes, but I am here for it because it makes me feel rich and important. And like all rich people, I am greeted at the door in the ruined temple and get a dedicated waiter at Travancore, hand delivering me the flail. After luring the plebs out of my special place, I ditch them and make my way towards the Durans of Hatred. Where mobs of angry dolls are waiting for me, I decide to do the safe thing and ignore them while running for my life. I should mention though that I did switch back to the shaft stop in the areas with dolls. At this point I am so powerful that even my mercenary can just stand there and tank Mephisto, so that is exactly what we do. Making my way through the plains of despair I find an offensive aura killer, but the only thing that's offensive about it is that it's not a combat killer. After making Hephaestus permanently borrow me his hammer I make my way to go to the Hellforge, which runs me a second Ist rune. Still no rune which I can make though. I am greeted by part 2 of my nightmare when I come across Pulse Crawl of the Sharp, another physical fire immune. I have two options here, reroll the map or take forever to kill him so he doesn't follow me through the entire sanctuary. I decide on the latter and after what felt like an eternity but according to my footage was just 9 minutes, he goes down. Surely that will be the last time this happens. Lord the size deceives me once again, he always has the fanaticism aura. However when I come back from town he suddenly tries to sneak a fast one and shows me a might aura. I just want to warn everyone that is a visual bug, he still has fanaticism. So if you ever see him with something else, it's fanaticism. Without any problems I make my way to the infector of souls who is, oh no not this again, he is physical and fire immune. But it's faster to clear him with the little poison damage I get from charms and open wounds than it is to clear the entire chaos sanctuary again, so I sit through this again. I put a clothes spin on my nose and head into the Diablo fight, which I clear without any permanent damage to my nostrils. The area summit greets me with the guy that is just stealing my swag, the original Maddog. We have a western style face off but I end up killing an eternities old man for swag in what I would call a one on one fight, just ignore Narfet. And I make quick work of the other two and head towards my final destination. But first up we have stone poison the hammer over here, who well I just can't anymore, I am so sick of all these idiots being physical and fire immune. Why does this keep happening to me? What have I ever done wrong? Well, besides being a drunk, gambling and murdering an old guy for swag. And at this point I decide that I can't deal with this anymore and just walk away from my problems like a real man. Because of all the farming I ended up being a much higher level than I usually am and I decide to use the extra skill points into Grimoire to try it out. And I have to say, it performed amazingly. It stopped the Unravelers, the Council Members and the Pit Lord that Bale spawned. Not Lister though, Lister only speaks one language and it is the language of vitriol and hatred. He spawns a physical fire immune as well, so I lure him out of the throne room and run back for the bail fight. And one thing I learned about Bill today is that he apparently is a huge fan of Star Wars and wants to record his own movie, so he starts spawning enough clones to start his own wars. Oh well, let's just call ourselves lucky that that is the kind of movie he decides to try out instead of using all those tentacles for something far worse. And with Bale going down, we have completed the run. This is the setup I used to do it. A hard helmet, a rare wing dex, the scalper, a hustle armor, laying of hands, Mara's kaleidoscope, a life leech resist all ring, Saigon's belt, a mana leech resist plus 20 strength ring, Saigon's boots, strength for gear, vitality until I hit about 2500 life, and the rest in dexterity for damage and attack rating. I maxed battle orders, a few points in battle cry and grimwalk. I max throwing mastery and 1 in the 1 point wonders, I max double throw and double swing as well. The mercenary used the lore, a spirit, the viper magi and the rhyme. And with that I thank you all for watching, a big shout out to the members, don't forget to subscribe and see you all in the next one.